evening we're leaving the lectionary again. Actually, we're going back and picking up the lectionary for Christmas Day with the gospel lesson this morning. Because as I was thinking and praying over what God needed us to hear in the next weeks before Lent begins, and that just begins next month, I was thinking of those passages that talk about darkness giving way to light. And if ever we needed to remind ourselves about the light coming into the world, it is now. So this morning we read from the first chapter of John's Gospel, the first 14 verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do you know why we have candles in church in the year 2021? Some people will say because it represents the light of Christ. Actually, that's not the reason we have candles in church. We have candles in church because back in the day, priests could not read in the dark before there was electricity. But even after the advent, not of Jesus Christ, but of electricity, Candles took on a new meaning. They took on the meaning of the light of Christ. And I'm hoping that Epworth will adopt the tradition of having a Christ candle that is present all year, not just during those weeks leading up to Christmas that we light on Christmas evening, but a Christ candle that is the constant presence of the light of God coming into the world in Jesus Christ. We read this morning, as I said, the Christmas Day lesson for all years, which is 1 John, But instead of reading from Isaiah, and we did read from Isaiah this morning in our call to worship as well as in the beautiful anthem that Elaine just finished singing for us about arise and shine, your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. We went back to the beginning because in the beginning, the first thing that God did was to look upon the chaos and as God's spirit swept across the waters of the deep, God said, let there be light, and there was light. God speaks, and it happens. God's creative power. And then we go to John's Gospel to see the connection between the two, and many biblical scholars wonder why this is not the lesson that was put in the lectionary to begin with, the Genesis passage. Because how does John's Gospel begin? But back at the beginning. In the beginning was the Word of God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God spoke light into being, and the word that God spoke was Jesus Christ, God incarnate. This is a passage that I know very well because this was the passage from my oral exegesis project in seminary, which took an entire semester. When you sat there with a group of people who had lived together, eaten together, cried together, not slept at night together because we were up most of the night working on this project for an entire semester, and our New Testament professor walked in with his Greek New Testament in his hand, and he sat down, and we, without any notes, were expected to tell him everything that had ever been written about this passage. I spent a lot of time with it. And I think it's powerful, because it talks about the darkness in which we lived. That's why John doesn't bother with the story of the baby Jesus. John says, this is who Christ is. Christ, who was the word of God spoken at creation to bring forth light, part of the very self of God, become flesh in Bethlehem for our sake. John thought that's all we needed to know. He didn't care about shepherds and angels and magi. He begins with the declaration of who Christ is for us, the light of God that steps into the darkness. 
the light of God that no light can overcome. I love how it's put in the present tense. The light shines in the darkness. Not the light shone in the darkness. The light shines in the darkness in a better interpretation than the darkness did not overcome it. The darkness has not overcome it. In the Greek, a more accurate rendering of that because it's the present tense, because into the darkness of the world, Christ continues to come. Into our darkness, Christ continues to come. Into our lives, Christ continues to come. Now, if ever there was a dark week, this was it. And I realize that to speak about the events of this week will alienate some of you and will make some of you think I don't go far enough, because what you're going to see, some people will say, is political. It's hard to separate our faith life from the life of the world, isn't it? to say that we can't discuss anything here that might have political ramifications. But my heart was broken this week as I watched the assault on our Capitol. I will never tell you who to vote for. I'll tell you to vote, because as an American, I think it's your responsibility, not just your right, but your responsibility to continue a democracy, a democratic republic founded on principles that for most of us have held true. But when I saw Confederate flags being carried into the capital of the United States of America, and when I saw shirts that said the numeral six followed by M, W, N, E, I looked it up online and found out that what it meant was six million deaths were not enough. And SWAT stickers. And I thought of all the folks in my family and all the lovely people I've served through the years who fought in World War II against Nazism and against that sort of oppression and what they would think if they saw what happened this week. We have a choice to make in our lives. And it's where we're going to look for light. I had the sermon planned before what happened this week, and I've changed it greatly. And it's not really a sermon. I'm just talking to you from my heart this morning. The light at the end of the tunnel. For us as Jesus Christ, I was thinking about the COVID pandemic. I was thinking about the discord that's happened in our nation. The light in front of us is Jesus Christ, unless we turn around and go the other way. And then the light at the end of the tunnel is an oncoming freight train. It's going to take us all out. Mark my words. If we cannot move past hatred, if we cannot move past my way or the highway, if we cannot move past political impasse, I don't know what will happen to our nation. This is the time not to think of yourself as a Republican or a Democrat or an Independent or Libertarian. This is the time to think of yourself as a disciple of Jesus Christ. I'm calling upon you all in the name of Christ our Savior, to live a life of love and peace doesn't mean accepting things the way they are. I've said to you before, I believe that black lives matter, and I know some of you roll your eyes when you hear that because you believe all lives matter or blue lives matter. And this week, as soon as what happened happened, people started saying, oh, yes, but you didn't, condone the, you didn't condemn the violence that happened during the protests and the riots around the country. I most certainly do not condone violence, and I condemn violence of any kind. But until we can live in a world where justice and peace reign, the justice and peace that Christ calls us to embody for the values of his kingdom, then we'll just keep having the same arguments again and again and again. To say that there's racism and it's a problem is not a political statement. It's a statement of spiritual truth. To say that racism is a problem is not to call any of you racist. But we have an obligation in the name of Jesus Christ to speak out on behalf of all people, especially those who have been torn down through the centuries. I read an article about something that happened in California this week. There was a protest going on on the 6th which just happened to, in a horrible coincidence, be the day of Epiphany, the day that we celebrate the light coming into the world. We celebrated Epiphany Sunday last week. But there was a 
protest, not a riot, but much like the protest that started as a protest and devolved into a riot in DC, in California. People with signs condemning the election and its results. And a black woman happened to be walking by and she started to be harassed. Someone called her the N-word and she turned around and gave them the finger. And then the crowd attacked her. But one of the men who was part of that protest movement stepped out of that crowd, put his arms around her from behind and she thought he was going to hurt her. Instead, he whispered in her ear, I'm going to get you out of this. And he picked her up and carried her to safety. We can be that person. We can step away from the crowd and do what is right because we know what is right in the name of Jesus Christ. So I'm calling on you in his name to fast and pray. Some of you probably don't believe that the election was legitimate. Some of you believe it was. Some of you voted for Donald Trump. Some of you voted for Joe Biden. Some of you voted for someone else. Some of you didn't vote at all. But the time has come to look at what our future could be as a nation. We have people dying every day of this pandemic in record numbers. We need to focus our minds and our hearts on healing and not on destroying. So I urge you in Christ's name, if you have any influence in the lives of people who are planning another coup, another riot on the day of the inauguration, use your influence to talk them out of those plans. Pray for peace among people in this nation. Pray that we might move beyond the darkness and step into the light because Christ is offering us light and hope and healing. He is the very presence of God in our midst. His darkness cannot be overcome. I mean, his light cannot be overcome by darkness. But we need to live in the light. We need to move into the light fully. So use the example of that man in California who stepped away from his political beliefs who stepped away from the violence that was happening around him and brought hope and healing to one person. I'm not condoning her for giving anyone the finger. and I'm not going to condone the people who called her names that were ridiculously antiquated and filled with hate. But in the name of all that is holy and in the name of Jesus Christ our Savior, we must live in the light. He is the light at the end of all darkness. He is the light that gives light to all the world. And in his light, there is life for us, abundant life. We just have to choose where we will live. Reflect his light. Share his light with others. If there's darkness in your heart, in any respect, no matter what side of the political spectrum you are on, root it out in his name so that you may be filled with his light so that you may shed his light, so that you may live in his light and bring others to his glory. I know some of you are probably angry at me for saying what I say, and I'm sorry, but there's just no way not to deal with what is happening in our world today. And if you're angry at me, I hope you won't be angry at the congregation. I hope you won't leave here. People have left churches over what pastors have said. People have left my congregations over what I've said. I've had death threats in the past over things I've said from the pulpit. I encourage you to do what you can to bring people together in the name of our Savior, to bring healing where there has been hurt, and to bring light where there has been darkness. Not the light of any political party or ideology, the light of God in Jesus Christ, the light no darkness can overcome. Amen.